So good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for the Office of Environmental Health Hazards Assessments Public Workshop on the Draft Revised Cancer Inhalation Unit Risk Factors for Cobalt, Sulfate, Heptahydrate, and Water-Soluble Cobalt Compounds. I'm Amanda Palumbo, the Acting Section Chief of the Air Toxicology and Risk Assessment Section, and I am joined today by Dr. Darren Dodge, Staff Toxicologist in the Air Toxicology and Risk Assessment Section. So just a couple of logistics. For attendees listening via webcast, please send your comments to public.workshop at oehha.ca.gov. And if you would like to submit written comments, please visit our website at oehha.ca.gov forward slash comments. The public po comment period will end on Monday, June 5th. For today's agenda, we will hear a technical presentation summarizing the draft revisions to the cancer inhalation unit risk factor for cobalt, sulfate, heptahydrate, and water-soluble cobalt compounds given by Dr. Dodge. Then we will open the floor for public comments. Comments received from the webinar attendees will be read aloud. Again, those comments can be sent to public.workshop at oehha.ca.gov. With that, I will turn it over to Dr. Dodge to get started on the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Palumbo. Okay, so as she reiterated that uh, this will be an update to the, can the cancer inhalation unit risk factor for cobalt sulfate heptahydrate. There are two corrections to consider for the uh, cobalt sulfate heptahydrate inhalation unit risk, which I'll refer to as IUR. The first was a correction for the true molecular weight fraction of cobalt presented in the National Toxicology Program, or NTP, two-year exposure studies in rats and mice. This is the study from which the cobalt IUR was derived. The second correction is due to a calcula calculation error. Cobalt and cobalt compounds uh, cancer IUR factors um, report came out in October of 2020. In it, we derived a uh, IUR for cobalt metal and other poorly soluble cobalt compounds. This IUR was 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus three per microgram per cubic meter. Um, this will not change. What will be updated is the IUR for cobalt sulfate heptahydrate and other water soluble compounds. This IUR is 8.6 times 10 to the minus four per microgram per cubic meter. We will be um, changing this cancer potency factor. So for the first correction in 2022, um, toxical, toxicological sciences, a report came out uh, or a correction uh, for the NTP Technical Report 471. Uh, in this report, uh, this, was in, well, this was a two-year study for um, cobalt sulfate heptahydrate in rats and mice. And what was stated in this correction was that um, the concentrations were actually expressed as the anhydrous salt of cobalt sulfate rather than cobalt sulfate heptahydrate as was suggested by in the tables and texts and methodology section. So there's three points to consider for these cobalt sulfate heptahydrate exposures. The first is that in the two-year study, an aqueous solution of cobalt sulfate heptahydrate was aerosolized for the exposures. However, in the chambers, the rodents were exposed primarily to the hexahydrate form, 
So there was a water molecule lost in the process of aerosolization and perhaps a little heating. Uh, the third point um, is that the exposure concentrations of 0.3, 1, and 3 milligrams per cubic meter are expressed as the cobalt sulfate anhydrous salt in the report, in the NTP report, and not the heptahydrate as sta stated throughout the document. Because the cobalt ion is considered to be the primary factor for cancer risk, the calculated cancer slope factor was normalized to the content of cobalt in our 2020 IUR document. The way we, this was done was we take the molecular weight of cobalt, which is 58.9, and divide it by 263.1, which is the uh, molecular weight of cobalt hexahydrate. This is the form of cobalt that the animals were actually exposed to um, during the two-year study. So this fraction, the fractional weight of cobalt is 0.22, and that's what we use to derive the um, IUR in uh, 2020. However, because of the correction that NTP um, published, uh, the exposure concentration is actually expressed as anhydrous salt, so the molecular weight, molecular weight fraction is 58.9 over 155, which is the anhydrous salt of cobalt sulfate. And this fraction, molecular weight fraction of cobalt, is 0.38. So this will change the cancer potency by 1.7 times. The other correction is a calculation error uh, made by OEHA. In the final calculation of the cancer slope factor, the cobalt normalized cancer slope factor, or CSF, was corrected to show that the molecular weight fraction of cobalt in cobalt sulfate is divided into rather than multiplied by the CSF. So the correct way to express this equation is shown here in the slide. Uh, the cancer slope factor is 13.41 per milligram kilogram day, divided by 0.38, the molecular weight fraction of cobalt in cobalt sulfate anhydrous. This resulted in a um, revised or updated um, cobalt normalized cancer slope factor of 35 per milligram cobalt per kilogram day. The previous cancer slope factor was three, so the cancer potency is increased a little more than tenfold. In the final step, we calculate the IUR, or inhalation unit risk value. And to do this, we take the cancer, um, cancer slope factor of 35 and multiply that by uh, 20 cubic meters today. The a day. This is the daily intake of an adult human of air. And we divide by uh, default body weight is 70 kilograms and include a correction, or I'm sorry, a conversion factor of, of uh, 1,000 to go from milligrams to micrograms. This resulted in a revised or updated uh, IUR of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 2. Now, as a check, you can go through this uh, derivation by first normalizing the uh, concentration to cobalt, the, the uh, original concentrations of 0.3, 1, and 3 milligrams per cubic meter. When you normalize it to the cobalt content, it is 0 0.114, 0 0.38, and 1.14 milligrams of cobalt per cubic meter, uh, respectively. Doing this, you arrive at the same cancer slope factor of 35 milligrams of cobalt per kilogram day. For cobalt sulfate heptahydrate uh, uh, document, we have a summary of changes. In it, we describe where the cobalt and cobalt compounds IUR document was updated to reflect these corrections. 
Uh, specifically, we have footnotes added to note that cobalt sulfate concentrations are expressed as the anhydrous salt and not as the heptahydrate. We also added the same or similar statements in the table legends for the uh, tumor incidence uh, data. And we modified the final calculations in the text to show the corrected cancer slope factor in IUR. That concludes the presentation. If there's any comments. Thank you, Dr. Dodge. We'll now open the floor for public comments. Did we receive any online? And it sounds like we haven't received any, but maybe we could wait a couple minutes and see if we get any. Um, the email address again is public.workshop at oehha.ca.gov. And also to submit uh, just written comments, that can be done on our website at oehha.ca.gov forward slash comments. Again, the public comment period will end on Monday, June 5th. Just read that email address one more time to send comments into the workshop. The email address is public.workshop at oehha.ca.gov. And to submit written comments on the website, go to oehha.ca.gov forward slash comments. We haven't received any uh, comments to the email address, so we'll, we'll wait in just another couple minutes. Yeah, again, the, the deadline for written comments is Monday, June 5th, and those should be submitted to oehha.ca.gov forward slash comments. And then to submit comments um, to the workshop right now, email public.workshop at oehha.ca.gov. We're just waiting a couple minutes to see if we get any written comments. All right, thank you for all the remote attendees who might be watching. This was OEHA's public workshop on the draft revised cancer inhalation unit risk factors for cobalt, sulfate, heptahydrate, and water-soluble cobalt compounds. <laughs>